Hello guys, uh, welcome again to the channel. I want to share with you my opinion about some articles related to um, the recent uh, build-up of military forces in the Mediterranean. And uh, so the first article I want to bring your attention to is this article that says that uh, NATO and Russia are both uh, ramping up their forces building up uh, their forces considerably compared to previous deployments and um, this started uh, to become like really significant so this is the interesting part about uh, this statement this comes from um, probably U.S. official, but it's not clear. It's just they say it's, uh, the aim is to show the Russians that the Eastern Mediterranean is a NATO area. That is quoted from Lieutenant Johan, aircraft chief's officer. So this is just um, the arrogance of the NATO alliance. You know? They want to show Russia that. The Mediterranean is NATO area? Are they kidding? Really? They want to proclaim themselves as the owner of the world? But that's, nobody says anything about it. It's like, okay, yeah, it's okay. NATO is fine. NATO is good. They can do whatever they want. So this is the most interesting part about this. They say that the presence of both uh, um, U.S. forces and Russian forces in the area has risen to levels haven't, that were not seen in a generation. So that's significant. He says, Ukraine has changed things. The Americans are bad. It hasn't been the case since the Cold War. Says Thibault Laverne, regional communications officer of the French Army in the Mediterranean. Russia has doubled, if not tripled, its military capacity in the area in terms of destroyers, frigates, and submarines. So that's the situation, you know, and this is also there, you know. There are currently around 20 Russian warships in the, in the sea, in the Mediterranean. You know? So this is provocation. That's what it is. Provocation, they say, is defensive. NATO, how defensive uh, this military alliance? No, there's nothing defensive about NATO. Even though they proclaim it is, is really not, you know? And let's pay attention to this order uh, article. This is older. Um, but let's take a look at this. So, pay attention to this, you know. This is from Secretary of the Navy, Carlos del Toro. You know? And he says, um, uh, the USS Truman is an um, aircraft carrier that is a strike group, as they call it. You know? The role of the Truman with other allies is to deter Russians from further aggression and to be on constant standby for orders that might be given from our president or from other leaders around the world for the protection of Ukraine and the people of Ukraine. So they're ready to go to war. That's what they're saying. Contrary to what people think, they are inching closer to confrontation, you know, provoking more and more. You know, they are scaling up. They are bringing troops. You know, take a look at this. There are already 100 U.S. troops deployed to Europe, and NATO has another 40,000. And that's what we know. There might be more. We just don't see, you know. 
and this is what shows he's doing so it's interesting because he's not following the rhetoric of nato he's he says he's trying to avoid confrontation his top priority is to avoid military direct military confrontation with russia you know that could lead to a third world war so german chancellor olaf scholz no wonder he's not so popular you know he's not a war monger he's trying to have a whole-headed attitude like think clearly instead of just scratching up you know, the military stance and recently um, he mentioned that he thought that delivering tanks to Ukraine could lead to a nuclear war and he says that there is no clear rule that says when Germany could be considered a party to the war so what he's talking about is here is that um, any country that is aiding up another country with weapons or supply or any kind of support you know can be considered by one of the warring parties to be a party to the war that means directly an ally and can be subject to attack retaliation you know that's how a big a bit small war can become a bigger war you know that's why German Chancellor is trying to be cautious about this. Yes, uh, he wants to avoid escalation. He doesn't uh, want to make it uh, bigger than it already is, you know. He says that the consequences of an error will be dramatic, and I agree 100% with that. You know? But uh, like I mentioned before in previous videos, um, this is about weapons, this is about business, this is about money. Is uh, The war profiteers are the big corporations that are producing weapons. So that's why they want a bigger war, because they want to sell even more weapons. That's what this is all about. Forget about freedom, forget about democracy, forget about Ukraine. They don't care about any of that, you know? Imagine what is the price of all the weapons that they are sending to Ukraine? What is the price of all this military technology that they're using? And, you know, they just want more of it instead of less, you know? Let's have more because why not? We can always use a couple billions more, maybe already. They, the United States has already accumulated around three thousand million dollars in military aid to ukraine so not going down not standing down not decreasing the pressure yes making it bigger and bigger you know well that's what i wanted to say now um let me know in the comment section if you have any questions or give me your opinion about this what do you think and as always uh, please like share and subscribe to the channel I hope to see you again very soon. Thank you for watching.